Welcome to a series of videos that we're making about the admissions process for the 2024 uh, academic year. Uh, this is one of three videos that we're going to post online, uh, just you know, quite, quite raw and quite rough, uh, but uh, it, we're hoping that it gives you all of the information that you need uh, to be able to make an informed decision. This first video is going to be about the admission requirements. The next one is going to be about the portfolio requirements, and the last one uh, examines what we're looking for when we're looking at portfolios. Uh, so without further ado, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about some basic information about Carleton and the Israeli School of Architecture and Urbanism. I'm going to talk about the admission requirements, the admission scholarships, key dates, program descriptions, uh, career and student opportunities, and I'm going to end with Imagine Architecture. So some key information is, is that the Israeli School of Architecture and Urbanism was established over 50 years ago. Uh, we have a four-year honors degree, which is the highest degree designation you can have at the undergraduate level. Uh, and this is the next point is very important. Uh, we have three majors, uh, conservation and sustainability, design and urbanism, and I'll explain each one of the three in turn. Uh, for a lot of people, it's very important uh, that they have co-op and international study opportunities, and I'll share the ones that we have here a little bit later in the presentation. And as many of you already know, you need a portfolio to apply. Now, uh, my name uh, in this presentation is, 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 well, so I'm Johan Vordau. I'm the Associate Director Undergrad. Um, I'm also someone that you can reach out to if you have any questions. But the very, very best person to reach out to is our undergraduate administrator, Cassandra. She knows absolutely everything there is to know about uh, our undergraduate program and the admissions process, and so please reach out to her. If you have other questions about residence, or maybe you've got very unique uh, issues uh, with your admissions, maybe uh, you did high school a really long time ago, maybe you've done it abroad, uh, maybe you have done some credits in CEGEP or college, uh, another uh, team that you can reach out to is the Carleton University Registrar's Office. Uh, they have all of the knowledge about those types of specific questions. So if the question is about our program, uh, please reach out to Cassandra. If the questions are very specific to, to other parts of the university or admissions, then please reach out to the Registrar's Office. So getting down to the kind of nitty gritty of things, our admission requirements is that you need English, physics, and advanced functions. You do not need calculus to apply to our program, but if you are uh, smart or, or, or strong in math, we'll just include it as one of your other three 4U, 4M courses. Uh, so when we're looking at your um, grade point average, we will take those six classes, the three required ones and the three highest scoring ones, and we'll figure out your overall average. The minimum cutoff of is 74 to 76%, but really what we're looking at is students that are in the mid 80s with a strong portfolio. Carleton has very generous entrance scholarships. So let's say, for example, you're coming to us with a high school average of 87% then you would get an entrance scholarship of $8,000. You do not need to apply. You automatically get this uh, when you accept your, 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 your admissions uh, here at the school. Um, that's $2,000 a year. You need to maintain an A- uh, average uh, at university to keep that scholarship. Now, what, what is very good about this entrance scholarship is, let's say, for example, you have a bad transition to university and the first term does not go as well as you'd hoped um, and you have a B plus average. Uh, that doesn't mean that you lose the scholarship, it just gets put on hold. Uh, for the winter term you'd have to work a little bit harder, uh, you get that A minus standing and the money comes back. Now the, also the nice thing uh, about the entrance scholarship is that it is for all new incoming students to Carleton. So if you've done college elsewhere, or if you've done SEJEP, uh, this en uh, entrance scholarship is still available to you. The only group of people that it's not available to are uh, students that are already at Carleton. And I, I would need to check this out. You would need to ask if you are an international student. I also don't believe that it is available for international students. 
Now, uh, these are some key dates. Uh, one that we really want to share with you, although we recognize that it's, it's very, very soon. But we have uh, an ASAU, so uh, the Israeli School of Architecture and Urbanism, uh, open house this uh, coming up on Saturday, November 25th. Uh, the, the larger deadlines uh, that are very, very important is either students will apply through OUAC, which is usually in mid-January, uh, but our Carleton University application deadline is March 1st. That deadline is really important because that's where you would get an applicant number. Um, applicant numbers usually uh, start with a 101 or a 102, and you'll need that number to uh, apply or at least to be able to submit the portfolio, um, which is uh, due this year on Sunday, uh, March 3rd. Now, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier in this presentation, I, I said that we had three majors, uh, and so I'm go now going to take a moment to describe what's different uh, and, and, and the definition of, of each one. And, and uh, this is why it's really, really important to understand uh, which one you want um, and which one you will say is your preferred major. So the first one is conservation and sustainability. Uh, so the easiest way to understand this is that it's the preservation of historically important buildings. So an example in Ottawa would, let's say, be the restoration of the parliamentary precinct. But uh, the way that we really want you to think about this is that it's more to do with um, the, the reuse or what we call the adaptive reuse of existing buildings. So again, I'm going to use the city of Ottawa as an example. But here we have a lot of federal buildings that are currently sitting empty. In Ontario, we have a housing crisis. So the purpose of conservation sustainability is to explore how we might convert the, let's say, federal office buildings that we have into the housing that we need. You know? Now, in Canada, it, it may seem a little bit ridiculous to make this comment, but it, it is true. Uh, the majority of buildings are already constructed, right? And so it really uh, goes to follow that we now start to figure out, one, how do we prevent those buildings from going to landfill? How do we give them a second life? And how do we convert them into the things that we need as a city as we continue to grow? Design is what a lot of you would imagine a school of architecture to be. So this is for both new uh, and existing buildings. Um, over the course of the program, uh, you usually start with kind of small, simple structures and go to larger and more elaborate, and complex structures and programs. Um, but the thing that we have, have shifted uh, in the last couple of years is that we've become more socially and environmentally uh, focused and aware. So our curriculum has also changed to include um, more uh, community engaged projects, uh, design build opportunities, uh, and new courses uh, that focus on environment and ecological systems. And the third uh, possibility for, for your major is urbanism. So this is looking at the built environment in a slightly larger scale, so at the scale of the community, the neighborhood. So if you're interested in policy, um, if you enjoy kind of infrastructure, larger systems thinking, zoning, uh, that's one facet of urbanism. The other facet of urbanism is, is really geared towards designing the public realm. So what is it to design an equitable city, uh, you know, equal rights to the city? Um, and so how do we create a, a, an environmentally resilient, uh, accessible uh, urban environment? Now, the skills that our school champions are design thinking. Um, so all three majors are what we call studio based. Now, studio is... Um, you know, it, it actually describes more the room in which this work happens. So, it's, you know, imagine a large uh, design studio. Everyone has their own desk. They have their own space. Um, this is where you uh, let all of your kind of creative uh, uh, work uh, flow. Um, but so in, in all three majors, you would get at the beginning of the term what we call a project brief. Uh, this would uh, say what, what, what you might be designing. So let's say in first year, which where the first studio is a common 
studio. Uh, maybe you're designing a small house or an extension off of an existing building. Um, and so this is where you, you develop that, that level of thinking. Obviously, the foundation of all university uh, programs is a, a, a dedication to critical thinking, um, and that's no different in our school. Um, so this is looking at the relations of society, history, and culture, and, and trying to figure out how these things are interrelated. Skipping a couple, uh, but just focusing on the ones that are highlighted. Uh, obviously, our school uh, has a long history of, of really wonderful and beautiful graphic communication skills. Uh, so this is where you learn how to use any number of different programs and techniques. Uh, first year is still very much uh, drawing uh, and, and, and drafting with a pen, uh, pencil on paper. Um, and then in the later years, you know, we're preparing you for your co-op terms. So this is where you're going to be learning Rhino, Revit, where you have access to laser cutters, CNC milling machines, 3D printers, and all of those types of things. Uh, we, you know, we work uh, a lot in Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, obviously uh, through history courses and writing papers, Microsoft. Uh, 360. And so you're going to get a, an enormous number of, of, of different you know, communication skills, uh, some of them graphic, some of them verbal, uh, as, you, as you go through our education. As you uh, continue along in your Bachelor of Architectural Studies degree, you're going to learn strong research skills uh, to prepare you uh, for graduate studies, and then also to say that you know our, our program is is focused on on collaboration and peer learning, um, and those very very important facets of of an institution. So collaboration in in that sense is that you do group projects uh, some of the time, not often, but the group work that happens is let's say um, in second year. Uh, maybe you have a very, very large site, so the class together will work on the site analysis of that large area, and then students will break up uh, and design individual buildings. Uh, there is one studio in fourth year where you will work with a partner because the project is, is, is very large. Um, but another thing that we're starting to implement in some of our courses is just where students also give peer feedback. Uh, so this is, again, a respectful way uh, of learning how to question and critique each other's work. Uh, it's important to kind of understand that work can always be improved um, and to, to kind of learn that critical eye uh, for, for how to, to both uh, describe uh, the, the work, uh, your own work to others, and to accept uh, feedback uh, from your peers. Now, I'm, I'm not going to belabor this slide for too much, but just to say that there's many career opportunities that you can uh, that you have when you complete a Bachelor of Architectural Studies degree. So it's not just that you can become an architect or a planner or a conservation architect, but you can go into many, many different design fields. Um, also, many of our students, which are actually not listed on this, on this list, uh, continue on to game design or they go into film or animation. Uh, so really, uh, the, the, the world and, and kind of the creative fields are at your, at your, at your disposal uh, with our undergraduate degree. Now, what's very important for, for many applicants is the opportunity to partake in co-op. We have a co-op office. Uh, they will help uh, you develop your portfolio, uh, teach you interview skills, uh, they do have jobs, uh, job postings. Uh, the school as well maintains an extensive alumni network uh, that, that offers kind of larger uh, job opportunities. Last year, uh, about 90% of our students found work in the first month and 100% of our students completed co-op. Um, now, to participate in co-op, you need a CGPA of a B, uh, which is an 8 out of 12. Um, and you need to complete the six-week co-op 1000 course. Now, you need to complete a minimum of three work terms, which is a total of 12 months of experience. And those, uh, don't, for us, co-op happens all at once. Uh, it happens uh, from the um, summer uh, at the end of your third year, 
to the summer uh, before the start of your fourth year. Uh, and so it, it, you require an extra year uh, if, if you participate in co-op to finish your degree. Now, you have therefore 16 months uh, to complete this 12 months of experience. The reason why it's 16 months is that you have the first summer, then a fall term, a winter term, and then you have the second summer term uh, between your third and fourth years. And I'll explain a little bit in a moment why it's, it's a three-month term and, and, and what you can do uh, with that. We also have directed studies abroad. Uh, this is a study trip that happens uh, usually in the middle of February of your third year. Um, this year we're going to be going to Morocco, Portugal. Uh, other groups will be going to Spain or to the United States. Uh, we also have DSA bursaries to help those that are in and that require financial assistance. Uh, currently, the assistant runs between uh, the assistance runs between five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. And last year, about fifty uh, percent of our students uh, received funding. Um, now, this is a study trip, so you're up early, you're in a bus, you're going to sites, you're meeting architects, uh, and then the exciting thing for this as well is that the, the place where you visit is where you will have your studio project. So as an example, if you could go to Portugal, uh, you'll have your project uh, probably in, let's say, a city like Lisbon or, or Braga or something like that. We also uh, have international exchange. So if, you, if you'd like a, a more immersive international experience, uh, you can go abroad. And so here are some of the universities that, that are part of, of the exchange program. Uh, it does change uh, a little bit every single year. Um, now, what happens is that um, you pay Carleton fees, uh, but you are studying abroad for the full term. Now, if I go slightly back to my co conversation about co-op, this is why uh, it's only 12 months. Uh, so I just want you to imagine uh, you've just entered into your third year at Carleton. Uh, you do the fall term um, in Ottawa at, at our school. Uh, then the winter term, uh, let's say you're going to the University of Liverpool. Liverpool starts a little bit later than we do. So the, the winter term starts uh, in the beginning of February and ends in June. So maybe what happens uh, after you complete your international exchange is maybe you want to do your first co-op term uh, in the UK. So you stay there. That's a possibility. Um, and then you just start and you would probably, if you came back, let's say to, to um, back home uh, sometime in September and straight away continue with co-op, you'd have about 14 months of co-op experience, let's say. Another thing that you could do is that you either travel through Europe or maybe you come back home for a little bit of a break and then you take uh, your co-op opportunity starting in September uh, and and have that experience to the following September. So there's your 12 months. Uh, then you go back to school for eight months to finish your fourth year. Uh, and then you have the option of either going back to your uh, to your co-op uh, company. You know, if you had a if you establish a good relationship with them, oftentimes they invite you back to continue working with them, uh, or you continue with your master's degree. Uh, so those are the, the those are the opportunities that you have. Now this is to just quickly show that if you want to be uh, part of the social life of the school, we have a number of student groups, and and we have uh, more uh, beyond these three, but these are our three kind of most established and largest student groups. Um, the and within that, the Israeli Architecture Student Association is is the longest standing one, um, and what is uh, you know, great about, about ASA is that it has both undergraduate and graduate representation on faculty board. And faculty board is the governing body of the schools. So that's a really great way to liaise uh, between faculty and students, uh, a, a great place uh, to raise questions or concerns, uh, and also an opportunity where faculty can, can uh, disseminate information uh, down to the student body. 
Um, this is a, a small list of the awards and bursaries that we have. Uh, between the undergraduate and graduate school, we have over 60 uh, awards and bursaries uh, that happen every single year. And so this is a, a great opportunity for, for students to, to help with the cost of their education. Now, lastly, I would uh, like to introduce uh, to, to, to many of you the, the uh, Imagine Architecture program. Uh, this is a summer career uh, exploratory program for grade 10 to 12 students. Um, the labs are usually between three to five days in length, and they run in mid-July to mid-August. Um, you can the, the labs are different, so if you'd like to do multiple, uh, they build up on each other so that you can uh, learn one skill and then build that into another skill and then build that into a third skill. Um, the purpose of Imagine Architecture is twofold. Uh, maybe you're on the fence as to whether you want to study, uh, you know, at a school of architecture or not. Maybe you're you're also considering to go in, into to something more like civil engineering. Uh, to participate um, in, in in Imagine Architecture is an opportunity for you to figure out if uh, going to a school of architecture is the right thing for you. Um, another thing is is that it gives you the opportunity to become a, a Carleton student uh, for a couple of days. So you're in our studio, you're working with other students, you're going to the Res Common, and that's where you're having your lunch. Um, so it really gets you uh, introduced to our campus, and it will let you know whether you think Carleton is the right program for you. For students in Ontario, um, you know, you're really kind of spoiled for choice. You've got four uh, good accredited uh, architecture programs. Uh, so really you should pick the one where you think you'll be the most successful and where you'll be the happiest. Um, and so uh, Imagine Architecture is a perfect opportunity uh, to figure out uh, whether the Israeli School of Architecture is the right program uh, for you. And so that's the end of the first video. Um, I hope this was helpful in getting you to, to understand uh, the application requirements for our program. Uh, in the videos to follow, I'll be talking about the portfolio requirements, and then I'll also do a video of what uh, we're looking for when we're looking at portfolios. So thank you for listening.